Jackie Robinson. Buck Leonard. Satchel Page. Willie Mays. Cool Papa Bell. Hank Aaron. Oscar Charleston. Joshua Gibson. We transform the game. Bob Motley had been a Negro League umpire and in the 40s and the 50s, and he had uh, they had written a book together. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to tell his dad's story. He also videotaped his dad, but he also videotaped other former Negro League players, you know, former League Negro League players. And uh, he said, I have all these elements. I really want to make a documentary. And we started the journey together, trying to entice people to come on board and, and give us money. And it took a long time, like a lot of documentaries do. And we finally got a company, Radical Media, involved. And they brought in uh, as an EP Quest Log or vice versa. I'm not sure which now. And we were able to raise the money. And uh, finally, we got the film done in the, in the last three years from pre production to production to post production. There were African American professional ball players in the 19th century. Negro League Baseball was so popular that Black churches would move their service time up an hour so fans could go to the game. If you know anything about the Black church, you'll mess with service time. What key takeaways do you want the audience to remember about the untold stories and struggles of the uh, league players beyond sports itself? Well, I just think it's important for them to know that there's another aspect of American history you know, through old, told through the lens of African-American people, that's important for people to know, you know? And uh, it's, you know, so for so many of us, we learn only one aspect of American history. And uh, it's always an opportunity to tell another aspect of it, which is, which is vitally important. A few entrepreneurs see that a black club can be a successful business. Rube Foster, light years ahead of his time. Effa Manley, the first lady of black baseball. Anytime African Americans have been challenged with, you know, you know, saying that we're no, we we don't want to be treated as second act, second class citizens in America, that's activism. You know, it happened in every aspect, every decade of American history. African Americans basically said we don't want to be treated as second class citizens, even though during the 20th century, the first half of the 20th century. We were mired in what was called Jim Crow. We lived in segregated communities. There was always a fight, you know, for for access and for integration. Now, it's a double-edged sword to be integrated in America, you know, for Black communities. But, you know, this is something that we've learned over the years. I mean, I, I was taught initially that when Jackie Robinson integrated the major leagues, everything was wild. Everything was like, oh, wow, everything is good now. No, I didn't know about the impact that it was going to have on Negro League teams, Negro League owners, and Negro League players when many of these other players were poached or attracted to Major League Baseball. That led to the demise of Negro Leagues by 1960. Uh, just to pivot a little bit, um, the intersection of sports and hip hop culture is definitely a fascinating aspect to in explore. Um, what inspired you to connect the story of the Negro League Baseball with the impacts of sports and Black music? I, I saw Lena Horne mentioned throughout the documentary um, quite often, and she's an icon in my eyes. So any any correlation you can give us there? Well, I think simply this. I mean, I think that if you go into communities like Pittsburgh in the 30s, you saw that not only baseball was a form of entertainment, but those players, when they got off the field and put on their street clothes, they went and hung out in clubs like the Crawford Grill. And they mingled with people like Mary Lou Williams and Lena Horne and Count Basie and other musicians who came into town or who lived in town. You know, so it was it was a way for people to sort of connect, you know, and, uh, you know, part of our experiences, you know, in, the, in segregated communities wasn't always horrible. It was also about enjoying ourselves, being with our own people and experiencing what life was like in those communities. And if you and me Wherever you had successful Black baseball, you typically had thriving Black economies. You have vendors and you have advertising. You know, people were making money from it. They are a part of a movement. Before we coined the term civil rights movement, 
Man, they didn't care about making no history. They just wanted to play ball. With so many Black stories out there, are you open to work with other filmmakers to bring them to screen, bring them to the screen? Yeah. Always. Always. Part of my job is to mentor young filmmakers as much as I can, you know, to help them find their voice and their vision. And if I can be a conduit to do that, please use me.